Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie featuring Ivan Ooze for the Super Nintendo. In the last part, we played as Giberlane Rocky, and now it's time for us to finish it off with the rotation with our first sixth ranger in one of these games, Tommy. Tommy was actually a bit of an interesting character because he started off as an evil green ranger, uh, Mighty Morphin, because Rita controlled him and such. But he eventually ended up beating Rita's control and becoming just a main member of the team as uh, the green dragon ranger. Then he became the White Tiger Ranger because that's the only suit they decided to bring over from Dine Ranger until uh, Super Mega Force. And then he became Zia Ren, the first Turbo Ren, and came back as Dino Thunder Black. He is the most veteran Ranger there has ever been because people just loved him that much. And he's played by Jason David Frank. Jason David Frank is actually one of the more active members aside from maybe Johnny Young Bosch in the voice acting career in terms of how much stuff he's done other than Power Rangers, because he was originally going to be the main character of VR Troopers, Adam Steele, but then they gave that to the person who was originally going to replace him in Power Rangers. Uh, then he was in Power Rangers a good bit. Uh, the thing I know besides Power Rangers for, uh, though, aside from some of the stuff on YouTube that he does in My Morphin Life, is... Dragon Warrior, actually. <laughs> I saw that movie once, and I thought it was pretty decent. He's also going to be playing uh, this one villain character in this TV series that's been announced, uh, Ninjak vs. the Valiant Universe. And that looks pretty cool. Also, I'd like to note, nice little detail. Uh, he's the Green Ranger, but then he became the White Ranger, which is the only one that has an exclusive sprite in this game, by the way. And because of that, I think they decided in the show to actually give him green pants and a white shirt so he could kind of be either. Either way, the final main level here, I completely skipped over the little anti-gravity section in the first, like, third. But it is actually, I think, the hardest level in the game, just because there's a lot of stuff that can hurt you. A lot of putties in actually pretty compromising positions. And just a lot of obstacles in your way. It's not that much harder than, say, the first level, but there is at least still a learning curve. I still think, on the whole, this game... <laughs> That's just funny. I do still think, on the whole, that this game is harder than the first Power Rangers game I played, purely because... You have less lives than you can possibly get, and you have less HP in total. But thankfully, the game is simplified enough for the, to the point where it's not really that big of an issue. And I, in terms of how I always... Well, first off, White Tiger Power. Ah, keep a ranger. Oh, what you need to do here, by the way, just punch this crane. It'll destroy... It'll get destroyed eventually. In terms of how I always felt about Tommy as a character... I actually liked him a lot as the Green Ranger. When he became the leader of the team as a White Ranger, I think he became a bit too... Not goody two-shoes, but... A bit too much of a focus, because in a team-based show like that, focusing mostly on one character like Tommy kind of became the main character for a while isn't as interesting, though thankfully the others still got their good time to shine. And I like how he they kept on the idea of having a recurring cast through the series, like Tommy, through Zeo and the first half of Turbo or so. But... I don't find Zeo and Turbo as interesting, honestly, as Mighty Morphin because of it. Because something that makes the Power Rangers series very interesting in my eyes is the fact that since the cast changes every year, mostly now that now the shows are mostly two seasons, thank you, Neo Savon era, but I think that allows you to get more interesting dynamics because you have new characters to work with. You don't have to use the same script ideas over and over again like they at some point, I believe, ended up doing in Mighty Morphin. Though I will give Zeo this, I like Tommy more as the Zeo Red than the Turbo Red, because first off, he was the Ranger for that entire series. And secondly, it was the... It's not the first time he was the leader of the team. Once he became Mighty Morphin White, he became the leader, really. Because Rocky was nowhere near as much of a boss as Jason was in terms of leading a team. But Zeo, I find that is his best Ranger performance, honestly. Because he's just... Has a good team to work with, has that whole thing with Catherine... And I just find it really interesting to watch. Plus, Zeo on the whole, I think, is still one of the more entertaining out of the early, not, well, or not early 90s, 90s series. Though I really hate those masks. And then he came back in Dino Thunder in 2004, which was honestly probably my favorite version of Tommy to date, because we got to see what happens to a Mighty Morphin member after all is said and done and what happened to him. Just so happens that he ended up becoming a scientist. Well, archaeologist, technically, I think. Whatever the term is. And then it ended up creating another villain on his own. Good job, Tommy. And then, actually, think about it. Tommy had a lot of shit happen to him in Dino Thunder. 
First you had to become a teacher, which is never a good thing, because that means you have to deal with high school teenagers. Then, when he became a ranger, all was said, said and good until he got trapped in a giant thing of amber. Not fun. Then when they got him out of the amber, he couldn't demorph. Then once they got him demorphed, he was invisible. And after he became, they made him uninvisible, he was in a coma. For like one episode, maybe two, but good lord, that was not a good life for Tommy. Either way, time for the boss, which I think is the only monster that's not from a episode of the series, actually. Mainframe. The way this boss works is that the orbs do the attack. You have to jump and hit the brain, which is supposed to be in the background, even though we're hitting it from the foreground somehow. Perspective failure. And each of the balls does a different attack. The blue one's the worst one, because the lightning is really hard to avoid. I think you have to do the backflip in order to avoid it proficiently. The red one will shoot fire from either the left to the right or the right to the left. And the way to dodge that is by ducking in the opposite corner. And then the green just sends a spread shot out. The blue is the worst one. You really don't want to see that much. And oh, hey, I actually died. Though I'll say this for a fact, that's a place I die regularly. I hate this boss fight. Though I do like the concept of it, I don't think it was well executed. Oh god, go, go, go. Okay, good, we're good. Good, we're good. That's redundant, Kyle. Yeah, at least I got that one up left. Uh, back. And with that, that's stage six. I think it's the hardest out of the main, uh, of the main six normal stages. But it's still pretty easy. And we get one last time to choose our characters before the final boss. And because main character, technically, I'm going with Tommy. Normal playthroughs, I'd probably choose Adam or Rocky. But for the only thing related to the movie, might as well use the main character, technically. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ivan Ooze. That's right, the main villain of the movie, who's even in the title of the game, doesn't show up until like the last 10 minutes. I really think that this game was not supposed to be a movie tie-in at first, but then the movie happened. This stage is a bit unique, though, in that you are automatically put into your ranger state. And Ivan Ooze, I think, is actually a really fun boss fight. He's very pattern recognition based. And once you start to learn his attacks, you start to be able to dodge them more effectively, and I just love that kind of growth effect. But he's also just very fast-paced, and I really like him. He does... Well, actually, no, everything hurts, because everything will take one-fifth of your health, technically. The thing you really need to be worried about with him is that... Not only does he get his attacks out fast, but he also likes to spam, like, two or three at once. That one right there is the worst one that I've, I only ever really see him use once per fight. But if you stay too close, you will get hit by that, so watch out. Move under the laser balls, jump over the bear traps, uh, either go underneath him or to the right of the daggers. Uh, there's one attack he starts doing when he's in his last, like, two-thirds of his health, where he starts basically charging up a spear bomb and slamming it into the ground, sending shockwaves in either direction, like this, actually. And he likes to spam that two or three times in a row, but he actually leaves himself very open when he does that, so just keep your offensive on, and hopefully Ivan Ooze should go down without a fight, or at least m not much of one. I also love this song. But yeah, Ivan Ooze, pretty lame villain. In fact, I, I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen the movie, but it's one of those movies that you really like as a kid, but then you rewatch it as an adult and you're like, why? There's a couple of good jokes in there, I'll admit to that. But for the most part, I, I find it harder to watch than Turbo, and I never thought I'd say that. Well, not to say that Turbo is bad, I just find it kind of silly, which is because it's based off a parody series to begin with in Japan. Hardest Power Ranger series for me to watch is still Ninja Storm. And he's down. Weird thing about the movie, too. They all had armored pl plating, too, because the all the footage was American exclusive in what? Power Rangers Escape Now. Are you kidding me? We have a self-destruct sequence and a beat-em-up. But, yeah, we have about 95 seconds to escape from the base. And I say 95 because you're not really able to move until around the 96 mark. They basically just like throwing things at you. There's a lot of things in the way that can kill you. You want to take as little damage as possible and destroy the walls as quickly as it can. It's a basic escape sequence otherwise, though. Avoid anything you don't have to destroy and just try to run. Not very hard, but I love the song here. Oh, and one last thing about Ivan Ooze, because I'm probably not going to be playing this game until I do, like, a round robin tournament with some friends with it. Ivan Ooze is actually a character you can play as in the third Super Nintendo Mighty Morphin Power Rangers game, which was a fighting game that had about eight characters, but there was a ninth one or so who was Ivan Ooze as a secret character you could do by holding X and Y when you select a character. 
And he was absolutely broken because he was the final boss and had final boss attacks like invincibility. Oh man, it's it, he's fun to use, but you need to make sure you're either playing with someone who knows what they're doing or can use Ivanus them themselves. I'm actually not sure if you can do two Ivanus fights or an Ivan a, a dual fight against uh, Ivanus. Honestly, though, even in the movie, Ivanus was a pretty lame villain considering the fact he gets taken out by one knee to the crotch in a comet. Though he has one of the best lines in Power Rangers history, I think. Because he's basically lamenting to Zordon of all the horrible things that happened to humanity that he missed. Uh, I think the exact line is, Of all the things I've missed, the Black Plague, the Spanish Inquisition, the Brady Bunch Reunion. <laughs> as much as I hate the movie, and this uh, that says something, because I don't even like the, the Turbo movie that much, even though I used to love it. That's a really funny line. And, uh, can, can I escape? Uh, get, please, the putties are dead. Can can I get out? Please. Good thing I did my child grabbing lessons. You know, guys, I know the Bulk and Skull are annoying, but you didn't have to beat the shit out of them. Jesus! <laughs> Either way, ladies and gentlemen, that's Power Rangers, the movie, the game featuring Ivan News for the Super Nintendo, and that name does not need to be that long. And how is it? It's pretty good. I think the original game is that I played for this little Power Rangers mini marathon I'm doing, because I'm doing three games right now, is the better out of the two, but I still think this is an enjoyable little time. Great soundtrack, that's for certain. But I do think it is one of those games that they made, were going to make separately, but then when the movie happened, they kind of had to tie it in somehow to boost sales. And while I love the Ivan Ooze fight, I would have rather have had it be like a Zed fight, because Zed is a much more intimidating villain. Either way, next up in the little Power Rangers mini marathon we got going on is actually this game's counterpart, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie, the game for the Genesis. And that game's going to be a bit different to handle, because let's just say someone might be tagging along for that. Now, something we're not actually going to get to see here, because I didn't play the game on hard mode, is that if you beat the game on hard mode, you actually get a password, which is up, down, left, right, X, B, Y, A, and start on the title screen, which activates morphing mode. Basically, it's the whole game over again on any difficulty you want, only you start the game in your mor- no, you start any stage in your ranger form. So, basically, the- it's easy mode, I guess, technically. Hard mode isn't that much different, though, overall. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great night. Take care. And my friend and I will see you in the Genesis version. See you guys then.